If you're taking pre-cal next year and you're worried because you feel like you didn't learn anything at all last year, don't worry, I got you. So I'm going to quickly review over functions. And even though you've learned a lot about functions already in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2, you're still going to be using them in pre-cal. So a function is just some rule where if you plug in an x value, you should only get one y value. So for instance, if we have f of x is equal to 2x plus 3, that would be a function because no matter what number we plug in for x, it's only going to give us one answer in return, kind of like a vending machine. So if you press B1 on a vending machine, it should give you the same snack every single time. So this is called function notation, and this is read as f of 3 is equal to what? Well, f of 3 just means we plug in 3 for x in our function, right? So we're going to plug that in right there, and so we would have 2 times 3 plus 3. So 2 times 3 is 6, plus 3 is 9. All right, so f of 3 is equal to 9. And that's all you have to do for function notation. Now, the other thing that's really important with functions is determining the domain and range. So obviously domain is always your x values, range is all your y values. All right, so let's look at this graph. And this graph is actually y equals square root of x, okay? And so we wanna find the domain and range of this graph. So let's start with domain. So domain is all the x values. So on a graph, that's looking left and right, okay? So I can see that the graph never goes left of the y-axis, or zero, but it does continue to the right. So I'm thinking the domain is gonna be x is greater than zero, and it's actually gonna be x is greater than or equal to zero because there is a point at zero. Now, the reason the domain is x is greater than or equal to zero is because we can't have any negative numbers. You can't take the square root of a negative number without getting some imaginary number, okay? So that's why this makes sense. Now, the range, same thing, but we're gonna look up and down. And so now I see that once again, it doesn't go below the x-axis or y equals zero, but it does continue up and it gets a little bit higher and it's not increasing super fast, but it is going to keep increasing over time. So eventually it's just going to go to infinity. So our range would be y is greater than or equal to zero, kind of similar to the domain. And once again, that makes sense because we already said we can't plug negatives into this x value. And if we plug in zero, we'll get zero. If we plug in one, we'll get one. So you're only gonna get bigger and bigger from there. So that makes sense. No matter what we plug in, we can't get a negative value whenever we're taking the square root. 